And thanks for the invitation. Um, I'm glad to talk here. Um, unfortunately, only uh, over the screen, but OK, uh, times are like that. So yes, um, I will I will talk about the universal deformation of affine toric trifolds, Gorenstein trifolds. And uh, so the, the project started with, with Alessio Corti and, and Andrea Petracci uh, when we had this paper, Mirror Symmetry and Smoothing Affine Toric Gorenstein Trifolds. Three folds. Uh, and, um, and so what, what I will present today is some new development that I did uh, over the last year. So uh, also extend the result by, by just getting all the components. So, OK, um, maybe I just. Uh, Okay, I'll start writing. Okay, now it works. Uh, so um, P will be um, lattice uh, polygon. So two-dimensional um, lattice polytope. And um, okay, we will have vertices. Um, uh, I will just denote by v, v1 to, let's say, vp. And in, in the lattice, it will be called uh, n tilde. So this is isomorphic to z2. Um, and uh, so, of course, I mean, when, when we have this lattice polygon, we can build the cone over it. So sigma will be the cone over p. Um, and uh, so sigma is then uh, um, generated by a1 to AP inside um, NQ, where, okay, AI are just VI1 and N is isomorphic to N tilde Z. So basically we just lift uh, P on height, on height, we put P on, on height one and we build uh, the cone over it. And then, um, Okay, when we have, uh, we can build a toric variety from this cone. So TV of sigma uh, is spec of um, of a field that will be, um, I'll just denote it by C. So uh, um, characteristic zero and algebraically closed uh, uh, works um, over sigma dual intersected with M. So this will be our affine uh, Gorenstein. Toric trifold. And any um, affine Gorenstein toric trifold can be is isomorphic to um, uh, to such. I mean to you you can you can have a, a polyto, I mean a polygon P that this works, so the, that you obtain it with, with this construction. Um, and okay, there is a I will also denote the Gorenstein degree, which is 0, 0, 001, so the so-called um, Gorenstein degree. And this degree has a property that, uh, uh, so it has a scalar product one uh, for all generators, uh, which is again a characterization for uh, being Gorenstein toric. So. Okay, so this will be the setting, and uh, um, now I will um, now I will mention uh, uh, so already known result about uh, results about. Uh, the formation theory of of uh, of uh, Tori Gorenstein, uh, uh, let's say also n fold. So it started with with uh, Klaus Altman. So um, um, so um, in uh, in ninety. So in in. Uh, he he had this uh, the following theorem so that if um, so I will also denote this toric variety simply by x um, so and if x is um, uh, uh, has an isolated singularity or let's say if x is we are in f is an isolated singularity. Which um, in uh, uh, in uh, so in, in in convex geometry, so a setting means that uh, P has all uh, edges uh, of 
lattice length one. So all edges of P have a, a lattice length one. Um, um, if if you have an isolated singularity, and in this case, uh, um, um, it holds that. Uh, okay, so first T1, so the tangent space uh, uh, of our um, uh, deformation functor of X um, is, which is T1, is is concentrated in in. Uh, in only one degree, and this is a minus Gorenstein degree. So, um, of course, the tangent space, because uh, you, you can write as a direct sum of uh, of degrees in in m, uh, and uh, if you have Gorenstein isolated singularity, then the whole tangent space lies in a single degree, um, which is minus u. Um, okay, this is simple to see, but the main thing is that uh, so he uh, and um, the universal. Uh, the main thing of, of his theorem is that, uh, uh, let's say, the universal deformation uh, the, uh, the universal deformation components correspond to a maximal Minkowski decompositions of P. So, okay, here, of course, he also construct the whole um, universal deformation. Uh, and uh, then there was this observation that if you just restrict on the, um, um, sorry, the reduced universal. And if you, if you, if you, uh, so, um, if you restrict to the, to the, just the reduced, uh, universal deformation components, then these are um, in one-to-one -one correspondence to maximal Minkowski decompositions of uh, our polygon P. So let me do an example here. Um, if, we, if we have a hexagon, this can be um, Minkowski decomposed into um, The following thing. So we have two maximal decompositions of our P, and uh, this one gives us one parameter deformation family, and this one gives us two parameter deformation family. So, um, and, and this uh, holds in general. So whenever we have um, uh, from P, uh, if, if P is decomposed um, uh, to P0 plus PR, we obtain R parameter deformation family. And in fact, this deformation family, uh, uh, you, you can, I mean, the total space is toric and it is the Cayley, uh, the Cayley polytope over this uh, decomposition. So you can, um, you can actually see the whole total space. And so what Altman proof um, is that um, uh, that those are the reduced uh, universal deformation components for uh, uh, in the case when uh, X is an isolated singularity. So when P has um, all the edges of lattice length one. OK, and now the main question is uh, uh, what if X is not isolated? Um, and uh, the first uh, problem in 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 this um, uh, the first the first problem that occurs is that uh, uh, t1 so dimensional um, is infinite. So we no longer have a, a, a finite dimensional t1 because in in this uh, in this case we can actually see that the dimension of T1 here is uh, just uh, the number of edges minus three. So in particular, in this case, you have three dimensional uh, tangent space and here you have one parameter and two parameter family. Um, and uh, okay, in general, we have infinite dimensional uh, tangent space. Um, 
So uh, we will have a problem by by just uh, you know properly defining what a universal deformation is. But luckily, um, the obstruction space so T two X so the obstruction space is finite dimensional. So um, so the whole um, uh, uh, when, for example, when we will considering universal base space, uh, it will have uh, infinitely many variables. Um, so it will be spec of a non-Ethereum ring, but given only by finitely many equations. So, um, so basically, only um, uh, finitely many variables are actually important. So it's still uh, not that crazy. So even though uh, it's a spec of a non-Ethereum ring, and due to I mean, so there is a um, this nice property that T2 is always finite dimensional, so we can still make sense of uh, what the universal deformation actually is. Okay, maybe questions so far? Okay, then I just uh, continue. <clears throat> okay, so let us look uh, how this T1 actually um, uh, how this T1 looks like. And um, we are interested um, for which M in M it holds that uh, T1 is not zero. And the answer is that, um, so if M is equal to K times U, where K is from natural numbers, so uh, uh, some, uh, if you multiply our Gorenstein degree by uh, so our or Gorenstein degree zero zero one um, by a natural number, then we have that uh, dimension of T one minus K U is um, number of um, edges of P uh, that have. Uh, uh, that is length uh, bigger than k minus two. So this is the the formula for the dimension of t1 in um, in degree uh, um, in degree k uh, ku. And okay, here uh, I want to say that k is bigger than two. Otherwise, we have the same. I mean, if k is one, uh, we have just the number of edges minus minus three, as as we had before. So for the uh, isolated case. And um, okay, so we have this, and uh, I mean this. Uh, uh, so those degrees clearly. Um, um, so all these t1 degrees are still uh, finite dimensional. So in each for each k, I mean for all k in n. Uh, at some point we will have zeros and then so all this um, so if we build a direct sum uh, and oh if we build this direct sum inside t1x this is still finite dimensional uh, but what it makes uh, infinite dimensional is if we are considering the following degree so let um, uh, we denote, uh, okay, we orient uh, uh, generators AI in a cycle so uh, that we have an um, edge EJ will be, um, and then we can just uh, define to be uh, AJ plus one minus AJ. So orientation of an edge, this will be in N tilde. And I will, um, so DJ will be the important guys and this will be DJ tilde divided by length of EJ. So uh, this will be primitive elements of N tilde. <clears throat> okay, so this is just for the notation, and now I want to describe what. Uh, now I want to define this M. So I will define uh, 
two B. So it will be on, on for every edge E J and and two numbers N and K. I will define N U minus um, K times um, S J, where S J. Um, so for each edge are the fundamental. generators uh, of the dual cone chosen such that sj perp um, intersected with um, um, with sigma equals uh, the face of sigma uh, spent by aj, which again we recall that is vj1 and um, aj plus 1. Okay, let me do an example here. <clears throat> uh, so if we have um, if we have the following polygon, And uh, okay, we we um, as I said, we put this p on height one. So and uh, let this be our Gorenstein uh, degree zero zero. So let's say zero zero one. Um, and and so uh, those generators, if we write with um, um, so this this vertex will then be minus one minus one. Uh, this will be two minus one, and this will be minus one one. And again, we put everything on height one, so we just add one at all these guys uh, to obtain the, uh, uh, and then we build a cone over this. And uh, so what is this, uh, what is then um, our, um, so for each edge, let's say we have here E1, E2, and E3, and D1 is then just um, one, zero. Uh, just an orientation. So d1 tilde will be uh, of length 3, then we divide by 3, so we just get 1, 0 as an element in n tilde. And uh, uh, then s1, this, this guy here, uh, is just, um, uh, so it's, uh, it needs to be perpendicular, so it's uh, 0, 1, and 1 in n. That's uh, how we uh, and similarly, we do for S, S2 and S3. Um, and just let, let me mention, um, uh, so uh, how this S1 actually, uh, um, um, so if we, um, if we really um, write this on, on, if we really put this on height one, which means then we have minus one, minus one, one, two, minus one, one, and minus one, one, one. Um, then if we look uh, the scalar products of this S1, we see that um, uh, for this, uh, uh, on this edge, we obtain zero, here we obtain one, and here we obtain two. And uh, our degrees Mn Ej basically means that uh, uh, I will just obtain, uh, I, I will put some n here, so some uh, n, n u, which means that, um, for example, um, if I have, a, uh, if I have, let's say, m3, uh, um, let's say, 2, uh, e1, then this guy will have values. Um, so we, I have three u uh, minus zero here. So here I will have scalar product three. Then I will have here uh, 
three minus two times one, so I will have one, and here I will have minus one value. So this is what M32E1 does. And uh, I, what I want to say is that uh, T1 in degree minus M EJ and K dimension of this degree is one if N is from two to the length of of our edge and uh, K is chosen such that um, M and K EJ is not in sigma dual. So it means that um, uh, it means that uh, all those degrees that uh, will have scalar product with some uh, uh, with some generator uh, zero or negative, um, then um, and if n is from uh, two to the length of the of the edge, then this will provide one parameter uh, families of our uh, toric variety. So, for example, in uh, in this case, we see that we indeed uh, have that uh, this guy doesn't line the dual cone because uh, it has uh, scalar product minus one with this generator, um, and n is three, so this is the length of uh, um, the edge, which is fine. So, for example, this degree um, gives um, one-dimensional T1. And of course, uh, from this construction, you see that you can just uh, pick infinitely many degrees and you will always obtain um, um, that. Uh, I mean, just to satisfy this, this is easily, uh, uh, we can easily see that there are infinitely many degrees and hence uh, T1 is infinite dimensional. So that's how T1 looks like. Um, so there will be, uh, it is non-zero in, um, in, in this minus KU and in those degree which I called edge degrees. So. Those are edge degrees. Okay, so that's how T1 of a, uh, of a general uh, three-dimensional uh, Tori Gorenstein uh, uh, affine uh, threefold looks like. Okay, and the next thing I wanna. Um, connect this um, T1 with, um, with uh, uh, mutations of Laurent polynomials. So I will now I will mention Laurent polynomials. So um, I will have, um, so if we have F in C and tilde, uh, so Laurent polynomial, uh, then, um, then we we build um, um, so for every edge e j we define a j to be h j to be one plus z d j so this lies in c n tilde. So Zeti here is a, is a monomial. And DJ was uh, recalled, defined to be primitive element just by giving orientation of the edge EJ. Um, and then we have the following definition. So F is called M mutable. So here, uh, m is um, m is our edge degree, and f is called m mutable if if we can write um, as a sum over um, f i i in integers um, such that
so fi lies into um okay let me in v v m um i will define what this v m is um inside c n tilde so what i mean by this v m um so um uh, so if we have a um, m defines an affine function phi m um, in the following way. So I just define, um, so um, that goes from n tilde to, to z and uh, I just, um, I just define this to be uh, um, m with n tilde plus e, where e is 0, 0, 1 in n. Um, so basically, it means m defines an affine function on p if this p is, uh, if we put p on height 1. That's all it means. So I just give a, a different name. So this phi m uh, is then an affine, affine function. Um, on uh, on n on n tilde, so in particular on p. But the way it works is just that um, uh, it's what m defines. Uh, so if we if we would embed p on height one, that m would define. Uh, uh, um, so just the scalar product with m defines this function. So so I I, I um, uh, so when we define this m mutability, we want that this f i lies in um, uh, in this uh, hyperplane. So uh -huh, whenever I write, um, whenever I write um, m equals to k, I mean a in n such that m a scalar product is equal to k. And so here the same. So they, we have this function. So whenever, so all these guys from n tilde that the, this function, uh, this affine function is equal to i. <clears throat> Okay, such that we have this condition and uh, and we want that, uh, so the main thing is that fi divided by hi is a Laurent polynomial for i in n. So recall that HI was defined here. Sorry. So we have for each H EJ, we define AJ and then we want H on I. So FI uh, divided by uh, HJ, which we defined uh, which we defined here on power i, we want that this guy is a Laurent polynomial. Okay, let me uh, let me give an example here. Um, if we continue with our previous example, and. Um, uh, and I pick a Laurent polynomial f to be the following one, three, three, one, okay, two, one, and I put two here. So you, we see that we can actually write f as, um, uh, okay, we can put here to be zero, zero, it doesn't really matter if we shift. Um, so uh, we can write f to be one plus three x plus three um, x square plus x three. So this is this line. So just uh, um, I have one here, three x here and three x squared here and x three here. And then um, uh, two y plus two uh, x um, y and uh, y squared. And so if I write this okay here I can do um, uh, to y one plus x um, 
plus y square, um, we see that, okay, this guy, of course, is, um, uh, is 1 plus x on 3. And uh, um, so, um, so if I define this guy to be, um, so we see that uh, f is um, m e1, uh, 3, 2, mutable. Because, um, um, uh, because here, uh, uh, you know, uh, this M, we see that it gives a scalar product three here, uh, one here, and okay, minus one here. We are only interested in those degrees, I mean, in, in those guys that are uh, natural numbers. And we see that if we define, um, uh, you see, F3 here, this is really divisible by one plus X on three. And then this guy here will be divisible by one plus X. So in particular, we see that f is m3 to e1 mutable. So the degree m3 to 1 we, we defined before here. Okay, so in particular, um, we see that there is, a, there is a connection between this m mutability of f and uh, uh, T1 uh, being uh, non-zero in, in M. So, um, so if T1x minus M non-zero, here I, of course, when um, this, I mean an edge degree, so coming from the edges, then um, it, fo it follows that uh, um, uh, we, can, we can pick uh, that is M mutable. Um, and uh, so there is a there is clear connection between uh, this uh, uh, non zero T one degrees and and F being M mutable. So um, and we will um, so in the in the second half of my talk, we will we will uh, see how the I mean, this connection actually uh, reflects uh, um, the deformation components of uh, of our x. Okay, since there were many definitions, um, do you have some questions? Were the definitions clear? Okay, then uh -huh, um, I forgot to say we define the mutation of F to be um, the mutation. I will just denote it by Fm, and I define this to be then uh, so. So I just uh, um, yes, I just so whenever you have uh, whenever I have negative one, we re, uh, we we saw that it is a Laurent polynomial. So I define this to be uh, our mutation. Um, of course, uh, um, here f needs to be m mutable. That this is actually a Laurent polynomial. So if f is m mutable, then we define a mutation f m to be just this guy which is clearly a Laurent polynomial. OK. OK, so now I will talk about uh, uh, so uh, the main result. So and uh, um, of um, so uh, what uh, uh, about uh, the deformation um, components of X. And there was a result of um, uh, Nathan Newton, um, almost 10 years ago, uh, and it, so it, it is, uh, so he proved that um, if there exist uh, 
uh, a one parameter deformation um, in an edge degree uh, minus n and I want that plus minus m doesn't line sigma dual, um, then um, this one parameter deformation can be extended uh, to Uh, to P1 uh, such that um, um, I will have, a, so the fiber over zero will be our X um, and the fiber over, um, and the fiber over infinity will be, um, will be, um, let me write, um, so the toric variety, so again, an affine, uh, Gorenstein toric variety and the cone will be the cone over um, the Newton polytope of Fm where um, where we define where we pick F um, with um, Newton polytope um, being our P and X is uh, um, TV cone over P um such that it is m mutable so that we can um so whenever one parameter deformation in an edge degree minus m exists so we, we see that t1 is one dimensional and in fact we can always whenever we have t1 one dimensional we prove that the whole one parameter deformation exists so there is actually a flat family over a1 and whenever this is the case, we can always pick um, such a Laurent polynomial that, that it has Newton, uh, Newton polytope equal to P and that it is M mutable. So, uh, I mean, I gave a quick example uh, before with this uh, M E132, but this is easily, uh, it can be seen that it can be done in general. Um, and, and then I define, so the fiber over infinity will be our mutation. So. Uh, will be given by the Newton polytope of our uh, uh, mutated guy. Okay, so um, if I continue this, uh, um, okay, I think I have a problem with one note. Um, let me just uh, close it and reopen it. And I guess you don't see. Uh... Yeah, we lost your. You, you okay, I think it should be back. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry for that. Um, did I? Okay, so um, let me just give an example here. What is FM? Uh, if I continue this example that that we have here, um, then. Um, so if M is M E one three two, then um, F M uh, is just um, um, given by the following thing. So we divide this by three, we divide this by one, and here we need to add one. So we will actually obtain uh, the following. We'll, we will obtain this guy here with one, two, one, one. Um, and uh, the Newton polytope is this guy. So the, this, theorems, uh, this theorem states that uh, if we consider um, uh, one parameter um, deformation in degree um, of this X with this defined by this polytope in degree, this M3 to E1, um, 
then we can extend it over P1 such that um, the fiber over infinity will be this uh, this mutation guy. So this is an affine Gorenstein toric uh, threefold again. There are some assumptions on, on M, but uh, um, still this is a very powerful theorem and one of the main things that um, I was using. So, okay. Um, and the next, uh, uh, we define um, MF to be um, to be those M in M uh, such that uh, F is M mutable. So whenever we have a Laurent polynomial, we can define this set of these degrees that F is M mutable, and um, and each degree. Um, defines uh, um, so defines uh, uh, correspond so uh, if it's an edge degree it defines one parameter deformation in degree minus m and in particular it gives an element of t1 um, uh, x minus m inside t1 x so each edge degree. So I will use this definition, the, this uh, this notation t minus m for uh, for those elements in t1. Okay. Um, and now if f, uh, so he, he, so we pick a Laurent polynomial f, um, and um, we have uh, the composition on irreducible, so. Um, which induce um, Minkowski decomposition of P. So P will be some P0 plus PR. And um, and this gives a um, R parameter deformation family. Uh, so this gives R parameter deformation family uh, and whose um, um, R dimensional uh, vector space that I just defined by UF and it sits inside um, T1X minus KU inside T1X. So in these uh, multi multiples of the Gorenstein degree, uh, we will have, so whenever we pick a Laurent polynomial F, we will, decomp we will decompose it and obtain um, our parameter um, deformation family given by this Cayley polytope. Uh, as mentioned uh, in the beginning. And of course, uh, this will give us uh, uh, our dimensional vector space UF inside those degrees. Okay, and now um, the main theorem is, or let's say, um, the first theorem is that um, um, so for any Laurent polynomial F, it holds that. Um, so X, which is given by cone over uh, the, uh, the Newton polytope of this F, so our usual X, um, is unobstructed. in degrees um, uh, so uh, uf union um, mf inside t1x 
So mf, recall that there were these edge degrees, so edge degrees m, such that f is m mutable. And then uh, when we decompose f, we also have uh, this r-dimensional vector space, which gives uh, inside t1. Um, so, um, and those degrees are these Gorenstein degrees, multiples of the Gorenstein degrees. And um, if we if we pick, uh, so for, for any Laurent polynomial, it holds that um, our x, um, uh, which is defined by um, the cone over the Newton polytope is unobstructed in these degrees. So, okay, what it means unobstructed here, um, so um, this means that um, there is a, there exists a, a deformation. Of X uh, with the base space equal to C over. Um, let me know this by just TF. So TF inside. So in general, of course, the um, um, so the universal base space will be T1 divided by some finitely many equations. And um, when I say unobstructed, I mean that there is a deformation when in these degrees when we don't have an equation. So we actually have C of uh, with these variables, and that's it. Okay, so this is um, the first theorem, um, and, and this was uh, okay. This was not. I mean, okay. Uh, upcoming in, um, I guess the paper will be out in in a week or two. Um, and okay, this was uh, this was still not conjecture in um, um, in what we have with uh, with Alessio and Andrea. Um, so I will I will now put uh, okay I I will give a brief idea of of, of the theorem, but um, I will actually generalize this theorem um, in the following. So um, I will give this definition. Uh, so um, we say that F is maximal if um, it doesn't exist uh, G such that we have this TF, so that TF is strictly smaller than uh, G. And uh, okay, we have another definition, um, which is uh, due to Alas, I, I, as Alessio told me. Um, and it says that uh, um, uh, so irreducible F is. is uh, a rigid maximal immutable um, if um, so if we have uh, these sets of uh, of Laurent polynomials uh, such that uh, G is um, M mutable um, uh, for every um, uh, for every degree m in m f, so this will be um, uh, this will be just multiples of uh, of f. And uh, okay, f is rigid maximum. If um, uh, if every irreducible um, um, uh, if every irreducible part is a rigid maximal immutable, so uh, if it is decomposable, you just decompose it and check this condition for each irreducible part. 
<clears throat> okay, and now the main theorem is that um, so if f maximal uh, then uh, uh, the above deformation over uh, C TF um, is a deformation component um, of the reduced universal uh, universal base space of X. Um, and um, uh, is the formation components of the reduced uh, miniverse, uh, I don't know, basically, um, of the reduced universal space of X. Uh, and moreover, um, if F is um, Is rigid maximum mutable? Then, uh, um, then this component is um, is a smoothing component. So um, this was. Um, uh, so uh, in in the paper with uh, with Andrea and Alessio, we conjectured that smoothing components are in one to one correspondence with these rigid uh, maximal immutable uh, Laurent uh, polynomials, um, which indeed is proven by this theorem. And uh, uh, moreover, we also see that uh, we can just um, I mean we can construct this component just by proving the unobstructedness of the uh, previous theorem. We see that. Um, uh, this deformation over uh, over this base space uh, is then uh, uh, will actually be uh, uh, those will be the the components of the reduced universal base space, and if f is uh, uh, maximal and not uh, uh, rigid maximal immutable, then it's not a smoothing component, but it's just a component. Otherwise, it's a smoothing component. Um, and okay, um, my time is uh, almost gone, so I I, I may maybe just uh, give a. Um, uh, let's say an idea of uh, how to proceed proving this. So uh, basically, you need to um, uh, you need to um, uh, first connect the formations uh, of X and uh, its mutated guy. So this uh, this Nathan's result, and you need to understand okay what unobstructedness of X, uh, how this um, how is this related to unobstructedness of this guy. And then, um, um, when you understand this, you need to mutate uh, X to something that you know it's unobstructed. And so uh, there is this uh, um, obstruction space T2 that is uh, well understood in the Tory case. And um, uh, so then I managed to mutate it in, uh, a, into something that uh, that I knew that it's unobstructed, and hence, uh, um, um, hence you got unobstructedness of the of the of of the original. Uh, toric variety X, and then there is a, a, um, additional check that which components are smooth, and it turns out that uh, um, if F is rigid maximal immutable, um, then um, uh, then uh, those will be actually the smoothing components. So, um, and uh, just to uh, I mean, to finish, so uh, in this example that we have, so this is an example of. Uh, uh, rigid maximal immutable uh, polynomial because um, whenever uh, uh, we see that uh, in these uh, that it is um, that is it is m mutable for this if m is this guy and and this actually uh, completely determines uh, um, um, this interior point so hence uh, all the other polynomials are just uh, uh, multiples of this guy so.